Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the more intriguing and actually somewhat unexpected discoveries coming from the samples retrieved from the asteroid Ryugu. The 900 meters or 3000 feet in diameter asteroid that was visited by a Japanese mission in 2019, and by 2020 the samples have been returned to Earth and in the last four years studied quite thoroughly. And we've actually discussed some of these discoveries in previous videos in the description, but today we're going to discuss some of the stranger discoveries and one that potentially questions previous findings. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but first let's start with what we know so far. So one thing that's intriguing about Ryugo is that technically this is a near-Earth object and a potentially dangerous object that does actually have a chance to collide with the planet at some point. And there are quite a lot of similar objects out there with many previously colliding with Earth. Which means that over time these objects very likely delivered a lot of different stuff to our planet and naturally transformed it in a lot of different ways. Which is why studying these asteroids is kind of important for both understanding the source of all of the organic materials on the planet, also things like water, but to also figure out how planets formed as well because these are technically leftovers from the planetary formation. And by studying the first samples back in 2020-2021, researchers revealed that this was very likely an object that was formed in very high temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius and possibly really close to the sun, but then at some point was actually transported to the outer parts of the solar system where it possibly spent the next 4.5 billion years. And all of this initial formation process only took 2-3 to three million years, with the initial object actually being much larger, possibly about 100 kilometers in size. And based on the analysis of the samples, we also know that at some point it even had liquid water somewhere inside, meaning that it was actually probably pretty warm. And this is based on the chemical analysis, including discoveries of things like carbonated liquid water, which were discovered inside the samples a few years back. And here there was a lot of stuff indicating liquid water, salts, organic matter, and even tiny crystals that were shaped like very tiny corals. Although not real corals, just organic crystals produced in liquid conditions. But much more surprisingly, researchers also discovered a huge amount of amino acids, basically the building blocks of DNA. Here over 20 have been discovered so far, including carbon-rich molecules and even things like vitamin B3 and uracil, which is one of the four components for RNA. And that was obviously surprising, but super exciting. It basically suggested that many of these particles and many of these compounds could have actually arrived to Earth from outer space, enriching the planet over time billions of years ago and eventually leading to life. But then there were also signs of this object basically spending a very long time in complete darkness based on observations of various isotopes including titanium, chromium and molybdenum and various magnetic discoveries that essentially suggested that this object mostly spent time way beyond Jupiter. But then at some point there was a collision and this collision produced much smaller pieces with many eventually making their way toward the inner solar system and one becoming a Ryugu and coming close to planet Earth. Here, based on the analysis, researchers believe that it was actually a 100 km in size object destroyed by a smaller 10 km impactor, but that was moving at approximately 5 km per second in velocity, which was essentially the birth of Ryugu and a lot of its siblings. And quite a lot of international teams studied the samples, discovering a lot of stuff in the process. And in one of the recent studies that you can find in the description, researchers once again discovered additional elements and additional compounds, highlighting the connection between these asteroids and possible source of life on the planet. And so here the study by Pilarje on the phosphorus-rich grains in Ryugu samples once again looked for the evidence that many compounds necessary for life might have come from these asteroids. And here by conducting an X-ray analysis inside a tiny vacuum chamber, scientists discovered hydrated magnesium, ammonium, phosphorus and a lot of different compounds that were hydrated, which might have actually served as building blocks for life in the first 100 million years on Earth. But importantly, they once again confirmed that many of these compounds can only form way way past Jupiter, extremely close to the Kuiper belt. And so basically many of these compounds that potentially arrived to Earth to one day form life, all possibly arrived from much farther away 
and could not have formed on Earth very easily. Mostly because if they actually formed closer to the Sun, they would have evaporated a long time ago. And here they also discovered things like ammonium. Which is actually pretty important because it then breaks down into nitrogen, whose origin on Earth is still not clear. And so pretty much every study on the samples from Yugu kept discovering very similar evidence. Basically, asteroids like this, which we actually know exist pretty much everywhere in the solar system, seem to have a very high chance to be responsible for delivering building blocks of life to planet Earth. But then there was also a question of, okay, but is there a chance that they might have also brought life itself? In other words, is there a chance for panspermia? Maybe life did come from somewhere else, either from another planet or from a different source in the solar system, and was basically delivered to Earth that way. And naturally, reports of potential life discovered in asteroids is not new. You might want to check out one of the older videos about the famous ALH84001 asteroid that back in the 90s was actually reported to be a definitive proof of life coming from somewhere else. You can kind of see this little worm here that was supposed to represent this. However, today we are pretty sure that this was basically created naturally through chemical reactions. That video right there describes it better. And so by studying Ryugu and looking for signs of something here might actually help us resolve the idea of panspermia as well, or at least discover something new we never thought was possible. And that's exactly what just happened in a very recent study that once again you can find in the description. So just to clarify, there was no discovery of panspermia or life being delivered to Earth from outside, but there was a discovery of bacterial life inside Ryugu samples. And this is of course where things get really interesting. Luckily, in this study, Matthew Genge and his team decided to be very scientific about their title and avoided unnecessary need for publicity. I mean, they could have announced this as, look at that, we've just discovered life in an asteroid sample. But instead, they almost directly state that they basically discovered a way that for some reason life from planet Earth can actually colonize a lot of samples even in extremely sterile conditions. Which by itself is possibly an even bigger discovery and may even suggest that modern panspermia or delivery of alien life from somewhere else right now might be physically impossible. We'll discuss why in a few seconds. And so essentially here, the researchers from the Imperial College of London definitively discovered that a lot of samples they were studying contained unusual particles that could have been only life. Here this was based on a sample known as A0180, that's only like a tiny sand grain in size, that was delivered to Earth in a hermetically sealed chamber with a sample only opened in an extremely nitrogen-rich environment in a class 10,000 clean room that's supposed to contain basically nothing inside. On top of this, individual particles were always handled using sterilized tools and pretty much every single procedure here when it comes to contamination protocol was top of the line. You can read about all of them in the study in the description. And while despite of all of this, even though the samples were not handled by anyone else, here they definitively discovered signs of rods, filaments, organic matter, and even filamentous microorganisms that were visible on the sample's surface. But even though they all differed in size and morphology, all of them resembled known terrestrial microbes. Moreover, their abundance and their overall mass seems to have changed in time. Essentially, in approximately 5.2 days, there was definitive growth and even decline of these organisms, implying that they were basically living inside of the sample and were somehow loving it. But right now we don't really know which organisms this is. The DNA analysis has not been performed yet, mostly because there is just a very low number of organisms here and it would be difficult to extract them one by one. But considering that so many previous studies have actually discovered similar microorganisms with very similar shapes inside asteroid samples, this could potentially explain why. For example, one of the bacteria here almost definitively resembles Bacillus an extremely common bacterium, usually living in soil and water, that can easily colonize new niches. Which basically suggests that somehow, despite how hard we try to basically sterilize these samples and avoid contamination, the terrestrial contamination seems to still happen very likely during the preparation stage and is very likely not really coming from the asteroid itself. In other words, the main conclusion here is of course that current contamination protocols seem to be not working. The bacteria can still colonize the samples even under very strict conditions. In other words, these samples seem to be compromised. But there are some additional conclusions from this study and some additional implications that we need to discuss. First of all is the obvious one. 
We now cannot be so certain about previous discoveries, including discoveries of various amino acids, because technically they could have come from these bacterial contaminants. On the other hand, because these samples are so rich in hydrocarbons, and because there is so much organic matter, since these bacteria are able to metabolize so many compounds inside the asteroid and can definitely survive and grow inside of it, this once again confirms that many of these asteroids could have potentially resulted in the beginning of life on the planet by breeding so much stuff from the outside and helping life kickstart at some point in the past. But at the same time, as I mentioned before, this kind of puts a huge dent on this whole panspermia thing, or basically any life coming from somewhere else to planet Earth right now and trying to settle here today. Since our planet is essentially overpopulated in microbial life that seems to get into everything at all times, there might be basically absolutely no chance for anything from the outside to ever survive on our planet. No new form of life can originate on Earth, evolving and competing with microbes, because everything livable on Earth is already overpopulated. Microbes on Earth are so abundant that they basically are using all of the resource to the max and they've practically left no niches untouched. Nothing else from outer space can ever settle here just because there's no space to settle. And there are some really intriguing anecdotes of various species of microbes discovered in NASA clean rooms, and these are supposed to be the most contamination-free rooms in the entire world, with these microbes not only evading disinfection, but actually adapting and surviving on clean agents as a food source. One example that was officially confirmed a few years back is the bacterium you see right here known as Acinetobacter baumani. They seem to be able to easily eat cleaning products and easily grow on ethanol and isopropyl alcohol and can even survive hydrogen peroxide, basically dominating everything else in certain niches. And so something very similar potentially happened here as well. Which basically means that we need to take a lot of these studies that study asteroid samples and discover signs of life in them with extreme caution. Even discovering organic molecules or amino acids might still be a sign of contamination and unfortunately not coming from outer space, but basically coming from Earth through very sneaky means. Although in this study, the researchers are almost certain that this sample was probably contaminated during the sample preparation after it was removed from the nitrogen atmosphere and possibly after the samples were distributed amongst different teams. But in reality, we might never actually know when this contamination happened, we just know based on the study that it definitely happened. And that's a super important discovery, especially when it comes to criticizing papers that make bold claims that some life might have been discovered inside asteroids, including some of the more recent studies like this from 2021 that basically claimed microorganism science inside a different asteroid. And obviously the author in this case do actually discuss the idea that maybe these were in the asteroid this whole time even before it landed on the planet. Here, they pretty much disagree with this proposition because no signs of fossilization were discovered in the samples and these microbes appear to be brand new. This is actually based on an X-ray analysis involving specific peaks from observations of nitrogen. And so since these microbes did not appear to be fossilized and there were no signs of fossils anywhere, they would have unlikely to have lived in there for longer than a few days. And so yeah, a super important study and a very important discovery basically confirming that life always finds a way and also confirming that previous studies have a very slight chance of potentially being incorrect. But because the evidence from this study almost definitively confirms that these were terrestrial organisms, it means that current techniques when it comes to decontamination are just not good enough. But also confirms that microorganisms on our planet are incredible colonizers and are easily able to adapt to pretty much any conditions. And that of course includes escaping Earth and possibly colonizing some other planets. As a matter of fact, there's been a lot of speculations that many Earth bacteria potentially already started to colonize Mars because we brought them there on various Martian missions. But we'll talk about these discoveries and a lot of additional discoveries in some of the future videos. So subscribe and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.